We at the Adventure Bike Shop have used our experience from our own halfway around the world and back travels. That was, that was, well, uh, um, to put together a range of products that we think are, are top quality, will last you a trip, brands we know and trust, products we've used ourselves. Adventure Bike Shop, proud sponsors of Adventure Bike TV. In this month's show, I get challenged to a geocache adventure. Omo goes under the visor before the start of his big adventure. We take a look at Endeavour Motorsports and their great location for riding. And we celebrate Graham Field's 50th birthday by making a dream come true. Welcome to Adventure Bike TV, where we are making the most of what remains of our British summer before it turns really horrible and cold and wet and Tom makes me go out in all my wet weather gear. This month I decided I didn't want to do a bike test, but what I did want to do was to get out on our Triumph Tiger 800 XC Adventure Rally Bike. We have to come up with a better name than that. Anyway, I want to get out on that bike because I haven't done so yet. But when I asked Tom, the producer, he said it was okay on one condition. I had to undertake a challenge. So now I finally get my chance to ride the Triumph Tiger Rally Bike, which I'm rather looking forward to. All I need now is the challenge. So. Tom, challenge please. Tom? The challenge, right. Let's see what Tom's got planned for me. Graham, your task today is to go geocaching. Geocaching, I have not got a clue what that is. Here are the rules. You have nine geocaches that you have to find in just four hours. As I have no idea what a geocache is, I don't know if that's easy or not. You will be given just the coordinates of the geocache on an envelope. Within each envelope, there is also a hint in code. Okay, however, if you use a hint, five minutes will be deducted from your four hours. If you fail to locate the geocache, you will have 15 minutes deducted from your time. If you fail to find the final geocache within the allotted time, you will have to perform a forfeit. Thanks. If you do do it within the given time, your producer will have to do the same forfeit. Now that sounds much more like it. The loser gets egged and floured. There is no way I am getting floured. I can probably live with the eggs, but Ew, I'll turn into a cake. Good luck, your ever-loving producer, Kiss Kiss Kiss. He didn't write kisses on there, really. Your ever-loving producer, ha-ha! Right, ha-ha. I better go and get my bike gear on.
Thank you. Right. Oh, okay. Coordinates. Having never actually put coordinates into this, this could be interesting. Oh, coordinates. North 51. Okay. It's only half a mile away. So, what exactly is geocaching? Well, basically, it's treasure hunting. There are millions of geocaches all over the world. These vary from tiny ones, where you just sign your name, to big ones where you can swap trinkets. The geocache website has loads of free geocaches, and if you get into it seriously, you can pay a small subscription to get all of them. You can use an app on your phone or download direct from the website to your GPS. It's a great way to spice up a walk or help get the kids out and about, so definitely worth checking it out. Okay, so the GPS has brought me to the side of the, to the road and now it's taking me off the road. <sighs> I'm not going to run just yet, but there's every chance I might be running a little bit later. I thought this was a motorcycle adventure anyway. Why am I walking? Flipper neck. There's lots of walking. I'm gonna get really hot, aren't I? Moan, 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 moan. <laughs> I'm making John run after me. <laughs> Things are not marked. And they could. Right, this is telling me I've arrived. Aha! Look under, look under the rock, and ye shall find. Yeah. This is my first ever geocache. Oh, look, it's got a little book in it and everything. Right. Congratulations, you've just found a geocache, intentionally or not. See inside. <laughs> Somebody apparently found this. Uh, this was Lisa, and she was taking her hamster on a trip. <laughs> That's geocache one done. Um, there's a lot of people who obviously take it very seriously because all the little notes written in there, and quite sweet to see the little note from the girl with the hamster. Ask me again in three hours and 52 minutes about how much I'm enjoying running around looking at other people's little treasures. It's a bit of fun, a little mini adventure. Okay, thank you. Right, next ones. Weirdly, it's telling it's looking like I'm here, but it's telling me I'm 40 yards away. But if I'm gonna think about it, it should be somewhere where people have been before. Could people have been walking here before? That's not it. Oh, it's lethal, that looks like a river down there or something. Okay, we'll use a clue. Number two, use a clue. I can work out the code as well, is that right? I'm, I'm really becoming quite bitter already. <laughs> I think I should have five minutes off for that because a clue that says you must shagon the log to claim this find has obviously been removed by somebody who doesn't speak English to start with properly and, other, and has also got no brains. Tom, just explain to me. <laughs> How does this help me? You must shagon the log to claim this find. Look, you must shagon the log to claim this find. How does that help me? What log? There's no logs. Log. Logs, what logs? <laughs> right. <clears throat> 
I've found it. Yay. I'm sure I'll enjoy it in a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling really bitter. Right. Okay. Try to highlight a route. Well, that was interesting. I suppose actually, it's a bit of a laugh. I find it frustrating when I can't, when I can't do things. Now, I had to think. Where would I hide something if I was here? See, I would, ne I would never come over here because the GPS coordinates made it look like it was over there. Explain again to me why this is so much fun. <laughs> it is nice to be able to, to get out and be outside and have a reason to be outside and to do something, yes. Also, if you're the kind of person who enjoys orienteering, you'd really enjoy this. It's taken me so long to even work out where in the hell the surrounding 30 trees, river, bridge, gate and drain holes it might be. I might as well just start with a clue. Hold it, epic career. Right then. Before I tell you what the clue is, I don't want to sound bitter without some justification. So just, Tom, will you just pan round, just, just, just slowly. And there's one thing that strikes me about this place, is it's full of trees. A lot of which look old and falling down. And then I go to the hint. When translated, rotten tree. That's not helping much, to be fair. I am sounding bitter because I'm finding it frustrating because I, I hate losing and I'm finding this very difficult to win at, which is why I'm sounding bitter and twisted. But actually we have just found a beautiful spot where we can come and do more filming another time. Um, and it would be a laugh if there, were, if there were four or five of you sharing the burden it would be fun. It would be, it'd be, it'd be quite cool. So I, I need to, now I need to find rotten tree. That looks rotten. It's a bit like the frustration when you're trying to find somewhere on a, on a big adventure and you can't find the place, whether it's a place to camp or and you just feel, oh, and then there is a slight sense of relief afterwards. I don't play games unless I know I've got a good chance of winning. Oh, what well, do I open that? Oh, not that that bloody helps me, does it? <laughs> open it up. Oh, I thought I have it, because I've opened up two already. <laughs> right. Right, I've come to a decision. I must take this seriously because there is no way I want to be egged or flowered at the end. And there does seem to be a kind of theme to how these things are working, which is the tree thing was frustrating because there were so many trees. The places are hidden, but I think once we used to find them, I don't know, they're sort of more obvious in some respects. So the GPS says I'm 10 yards away from where it is here. And I'm looking around and I'm thinking, okay, it's not up there because there's no footprints up there. There's a gate and there's some bricks. And I think I might even, I might even be able to see it from where I'm standing. Because there's a great big crack between the bricks. And I could as well. Look at that, there it is. So this one's got some treasure in it. And part of the, um, the appeal, particularly if you're taking your kids on these things is you're not meant to just put treasure in there and leave it you can take the treasure with you and kids have all these little things as long as you put another bit of treasure back in its place anyway there we go back he goes onwards and upwards thank you only three miles right then come on tom hurry up
I'm not even going to take my crash helmet off this time. I'm that confident of finding it. <laughs> okay. So maybe the secret is you've got to get to within this same, you're within 10 yards. We're calculating. I am fully expecting the subject, of course, to uh, the last one suddenly becoming exceptionally difficult. But uh, Tom will actually be wearing egg on his face. Whew. Okay. And next, right. See how far this one is away. I spent, oh, must have been almost half an hour going looking around in the wrong place. <laughs> well, maybe five minutes. We did eventually go back down to the other place. I don't think I need to take the take the um, the penalty for the clue because I had to use the clue because we were in the wrong place. Whether this is going to make any difference or not, there's far fewer trees. No, nothing on this side. I thought I had it when I came up to here and there was a little rock there. I thought, that must be it. It was famous last words saying, this should be easier because there's no trees, because we can't find it. And um, so I was going to take the penalty, which gives me less than an hour. Just gone through and worked out exactly my penalties and exactly how much time I have left, and I've got 20 minutes left to find the last clue. Or the last treasure, I should say. However, it is 0.9 miles away, so I've got, hopefully that'll take me five or 10 minutes, so it'll just like give me 10 minutes to find it when I get there. So it's a really, really close one thing. So I've dumped all my stuff in the producer's car and uh, we're off. Tom, how long have I got? About nine minutes. About nine minutes. <laughs> Easy to spot in the middle of the gorse somewhere. Right. Oh, so, no hint, but you still lose the time! Oh, no! No! <laughs> That's rubbish! No! 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 <laughs> See, I was here all the time. It was here. But you've lost. No. Yes, you have. Why? 
You got a five minute penalty because you used the cliff. Yeah, I had eight minutes to go at that point. Yeah, but it's been, it's been. No, 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 oh, no, no, you no, had, no, you no, had no, seven no. minutes to go, and no, you didn't find it in two minutes. So. I don't think so. You had a five minute penalty for using your clue. Yeah, with eight minutes to go, and it's not been three minutes since I used that. And the five minutes, and that doesn't count anyway. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm sorry, it clearly has. We are back at the producer's house. Me, having had a very bad hair day, and a very full day of geocaching. Now you're probably wondering who won the challenge, and we'll come back to that a bit later. But geocaching itself, well, I think if you're taking a group of children out to go and do a sophisticated treasure hunt, that's something that will get them into adventure, or indeed if you're doing it with a group of mates, it's quite a laugh, and I actually really, really enjoyed the riding, and I found some new places that I'd never been to before. And when I found the treasure quickly, it didn't frustrate me, but for me, I'm just a really, really impatient what's it. So when I'm kicking around tree stumps and bits of grass and gorse trying to find the treasure, hmm, I found it a little bit frustrating, but actually a lovely way to spend a day with your mates. Now, of course, who won the competition? Let's see. So, as we couldn't decide on who had won the geocaching competition, we had decided the only way to do this was with Egg Roulette. And I shall hand over to Tom, the producer, to explain Egg Roulette. Okay, so Egg Roulette, uh, I originally saw on the Jimmy Fallon show. And it's quite simple, really. Basically, um, we pick a number, um, we take the number out, we hold it in our hands and we on our own heads. Now there's two of those six, two of those six have um, are raw, the other four are boiled. Um, so you could end up with none, both or one each. <laughs> um, so, or we could do it on each other's head, what do you reckon? Should we do it on each other's heads? Yeah, each other's. Okay, so we, you, if you pick a number and then I'll pick that one up and slam it on your head. Okay, so should I go first? You, you said you wanted to go yeah. first. Okay, I'll go first. I am. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Okay, you ready for Okay. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> I just realised that if that had been hard boiled, I smacked it so hard that would have really hurt. <laughs> Alright. Um, I'll go for number four, please. Okay. I have number five. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> oh you got both. <laughs> you got both straight away. And he said number five. Okay. Oh dear. So that means you won then. <laughs> I'm not going to let you have a shower either. <laughs> you can drive home like that. <laughs> and there we go. Right. I am the champion, my friend. Last time I played Egg Roulette with you. <laughs> Well, that's the last time I play Egg Roulette. Anyway, now it's time for a break. And when we come back, it'll be time for Under the Visor with our friend, Omo. We have the largest selection of hard luggage under one roof in this country. Now, you're probably wondering why I've invited you all here today. The reason is, I would like all three of you to get into this replicated pannier box. And, together with a keyring and stickers, you're going to be part of a limited edition three book box set. And, you're going to retail for just £34.99, including postage. In the UK. Was he just talking to his box?
We are the sole UK stockist of the Redverse tent, the original park your bike in the garage tent. We also have a range of tents and other camping equipment from a number of trusted brands. That was Welcome back from the break. Now it's time for Under the Visor and just listen to what this guy's got planned. James Cargo Motorcycle Shipping sponsors Under the Visor. Hello, I'm Omo, I'm a business change analyst, contractor, and I'm going to Nigeria on my KTM 1050 adventure. Well, I've always dreamt of doing something like this, and one day we were having a drink, me and my friends, and you know, just said, think of something really weird you really, really wanted to do, and um, you've not had the courage, you know, the fear to, to, to do it. So I just smarted this that, um, yeah, I ride my bike to Nigeria as a joke and then um, just took action and here we are today. That was about a year and a half ago, but I started taking it seriously about a year ago from now. So the plan is to ride from Land's End to Lagos and I'm going to be going through 12 countries, um, so France, Spain, Morocco, Western Sahara, Mauritania, Senegal, Mali, Burkina Faso, um, Togo, Benin, and then Nigeria. But the interesting thing is when I get to Nigeria, I'm going to be riding around Nigeria again and um, I'm spending about 16 weeks in total and hopefully I want to ride back to England. Um, for me, it's just taking it one step at a time. Uh, I've been going online, talking to other people who are actually traveling down those roads, having chats with them um, on forums, and it all seems pretty safe, really. Um, I'll just take it one day at a time. There was an issue in Burkina Faso a couple of weeks ago where there was a coup, coup but um, things seem to have cooled down now. And um, yeah, people live there, so I'll just go and experience it for myself. Yes, I leave in two months, yeah, end of November. In terms of riding skills, I've done quite a few riding courses. I've done um, a Rospa two-day course. I'm actually a member of uh, Rospa in, um, in London. I've um, not finished doing the, got to my goal yet. I'm still on the course, but I've done the two-day Rospa course with a police class one rider. I've been on the BMW, off-road skills course. I have um, done a track day as well and I just ride as much as possible so if you can ride in London I think you can ride anywhere. I actually grew up in Nigeria and the first time I rode a bike was in Nigeria as a, a 10 year old um, and when I came to England for uni got my license here. Last year actually I rode, did 1700 miles in Nigeria on uh, Suzuki Hayabusa, it was quite interesting. Um, yeah, so, you know. 1050, I initially wanted the 1190R. I rode that, it was like, wow, this is it. But um, couldn't quite afford it, so I had to cut my coat, I cut it to my cloth. Tried out the 1050, and it's worked out to be actually the better bike for a trip like this, because it's um, much simpler than the 1190, less electronics, less things to go wrong. Um, what have I done to change my bike or to make it more user-friendly for the trip? I've put in a touring screen, I've put in a skid plate, you know, to protect the engine. I've put uh, headlight protectors to protect the headlights. Um, in terms of luggage, I'm going to be leaving my hard luggage behind, uh, just using soft bags couple of soft bags and a tank bag. I don't want to carry lots of stuff, you know, it's just to, so I can nip in and out of towns and places and 
Yeah. I'll stay in hotels, hostels, and camp when it's safe to camp. Um, yes, I'm quite scared of um, animals and creepy crawlies, so when it's, when I know that. <laughs> I'm doing it for charity Medicine Sound Frontiers, Doctors Without Borders. Um, great charity. I support them because of what they did in Africa in terms of curbing the Ebola crisis. Um, Medicine Sun Frontiers is one of those <coughs> charities that is not politically affiliated or religious, so they go anywhere in the world. They're actually working in 64 countries right now, um, totally funded by private individuals. I like Medicine Sun Frontiers because, you know, they support those who don't have access to medical treatment like undocumented refugees, um, street people, homeless kids. Um, they advocate for cheaper medicine, so for instance, they want everyone to have access to malaria, malaria medicines, tuberculosis, things like that. Um, also, they, they are up for you know, world peace. How am I helping them? So um, I've got a Just Giving page uh, um, so people can donate to the charity directly through my Just Giving. i raising awareness so making more people know about them. I, when I, there are selected stops in Nigeria and um, a couple of places in West Africa as well, I would stop and see their work and hopefully bring their work to the fore foreground. You have to remember that companies you approach are businesses and they're there to make money. So you have to, you have to make sure your project aligns with the, the corporate objectives. Um, you have to do something different, something that would benefit the company as well as benefit you, the so-called um, adventurer. <laughs> um, how did I do mine? Um, I went to bike shows. I, you know, when you go to the bike show on a weekday, all the marketing managers are there, all the people that matter are there, so you can talk to them directly, tell them about yourself, and you have to be very quick about it. So what I did was make sure the who, when, where, why, how were answered in less than a minute. Some of them are like, yeah, great idea, and some of them are like, you're crazy, you're mad. <laughs> Um, you're gonna die and all that. <laughs> but um, yeah, even though I say it myself, but no one has, no one has done Land's End to Lagos. It's a very unique, unique um, trip. Um, no one has quite ridden to Nigeria, so maybe that's, that's an angle as well. And then they, many of them are quite happy supporting me on some frontiers. So I think that makes your things. And then just being Told that I can handsome as well. Actually, Steve Vince is one of my patrons. I wrote to him to um, support me and said, yeah, 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 he'll do it. And I also wrote to Simon Pavey and he's agreed to be one of my um, patrons as well. So with that back in, I'm pretty confident I'll pull it off. I just really, 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 really just want to do it. Um, so now we're talking about it and I want to actually achieve the goal. So go do the trip and come back. And that's my prayer and that's what I want to do. And for now, I can't really say anything much. James Cargo Motorcycle Shipping sponsors Under the Visor. Now, we're going to be following Omo all the way through his amazing adventure, so make sure you keep checking back for updates. Now, it's time for Top Tech. On this month's Top Tech, we have a water filter. Now, in the first ever show, we reviewed a water bottle with a built-in filter, but this is a bit different. This is the Sawyer Mini Water Filtration System. And what makes it different? Well, is that this is an inline filter. It can be used with a bottle provided. It can be fitted to any other normal screw top bottle. It can be used with a straw and even fitted to the line of your bladder system. Basically, this means you can drink water from anywhere. 
even direct from the source. The filter, which comes with a cleaning kit, will last for a staggering 100,000 gallons. How much is that? Well, it would fill a tank 52 feet in length, 53 feet in width and 5 feet in height. The same size as the water tanks used by the army at places like Camp Bastion. Or, to put it another way, a family of four's average water use for everything. Showers, toilets, drinking, water in the garden, for a whole year. This filter is not just about quantity though, it's also about quality. This filter doesn't remove the standard 99% of bacteria, it removes 99.9999999% of bacteria, including salmonella, cholera, and E. coli. So all round, this is a great bit of top tech. Right, now it's time for another break. And when we come back, we sent Tom solo to go and watch a bunch of other motorcyclists have fun in the mud on their bikes whilst he just had to stand and film them. And we've got a big birthday surprise for Graham Field. We have the largest selection of hard luggage under the one roof in this country. Bollocks. Now, you're probably wondering why I've invited you all here today. The reason is, I would like all three of you to get into this replicated pannier box. And, together with a keyring and stickers, you're going to be part of a limited edition three book box set. And you're going to retail for just £34.99, including postage. In the UK. Was he just talking to his books? We are the sole UK stockist of the Redverse 10. The original park your bike in the garage 10. We also have a range of tents and other camping equipment from a number of trusted brands. That was Now it's time to catch up with some adventure motorcyclists who were taking part in one of Endeavour Motorsports off-road days. Right, so I'm John Amos, I run Endeavour Motorsport, which is um, a business basically around enduro, adventure, 4x4s and quads. Uh, I'm Wayne. I'm Phil. And we come from Essex. We rode down this morning, left at R5, and a three hour ride, and yeah, it was good to ride down, so we're looking forward to the day. Uh, we've been talking to the organisers for quite some time, and uh, they've, uh, they, they've invited us a number of occasions uh, and we just saw this as being a great opportunity to show the bike off in one of its sort of uh, natural habitats on, on the loose, on rough terrain, uh, to show that it can ride like a dirt bike as well as getting you, you know, down to the ferry to Santander and uh, across, uh, across to Morocco, for example. We managed to uh, obtain an exclusive uh, a contract with the uh, army down here at the Bovington Army Tank Training Area which allows 2,700 acres of land to be used um, so it's open to enduro bikes, adventure bikes which is what we're trying to grow onto um, because there's hardly anywhere in the UK for adventure bikes to turn up as a pay and play day. Um, it will offer camping, riding, uh, mixed in social stuff, there's also the ability to ride a quad if you've got a quad and also 4x4s all on separate days. Uh, well, I heard about it on Facebook. Yeah, on Facebook and um, online, and uh, signed up. Thought, yeah, this is uh, this is right for us, and uh, here we are.
whole point of coming here is that uh, there are several different tracks uh, available. There's the enduro course, which is basically a fast, hard-packed track, uh, which will allow you to ride off-road, a bit like riding the Pyrenees, so perfect for your adventure bikes. If you come down on an enduro day, that track is perfect because obviously then you can uh, ride a little bit more speed. It's uh, encased, it's one-way system, uh, so there's no problems with conflict with other traffic. Uh, the land itself allows itself uh, to be used for an enduro track, so we can put the uh, enduro through woods, making it a bit more technical. And also we have areas which are uh, sealed off from the main events, so which allows children to be uh, trained here. And we've teamed up with um, Silver Tree Enduro with Jamie Gordon, and he'll, he has his ACU license to teach uh, children and coach them. Fantastic day, great track, and John the organiser has done a great job, so we're, uh, we're well pleased. We've done some off-roading, but it's dirty, so yeah, well done. That just looked amazing, and I can't wait to get down there on one of my bikes. And hopefully, we'll be getting down there very soon with some quad bikes. Graham Field has always been a huge supporter of Adventure Bike TV and we heard that he had a rather special birthday coming up. Happy 80th birthday, Graham. Anyway, we wanted to surprise him. It's something special for his birthday. Hey, buddy. I'm Tom. <laughs> right, yes. So, are you ready for today? Yeah, yeah. Right. So obviously we've brought you, just so the camera knows, we've brought Graham here to do a feature on his KLR. Or so Graham thinks. First of all, happy birthday Graham. Thank you. 50th birthday. How's uh -huh. it feel to be 50? It hasn't been too bad so far. <laughs> okay, well, we have got a little bit of a surprise for you. Mm -hmm. The reason we're at this airfield and there's lots of noisy bikes around us is we're not going to do anything. As much as we love your bike, mm -hmm. and we will do some stuff on it in the future, we're not going to do anything for that today. But you told me a while ago in one of, the, in one of the shows about a dream you kept having about wheeling. And um, so yeah, we've arranged for you as a 50th <laughs> birthday present to come to a wheelie school. Uh, so you're going to learn to wheelie? I thought they were doing CBT. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then yes, by the end of the day, you you have to wheelie this with all your panniers. With my panniers. That's your challenge. Happy right. birthday, buddy! <laughs> hey, he's leaning after your briefing, Graham. Like I've never ridden a bike before. <laughs> Everything that I've been doing all my life on a bike now sounds very complicated. The clutch, the throttle, getting it all right. So uh, I don't know if everybody else is, is mocking confidence or whether I'm the only one who doesn't really know what I'm doing, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's my turn now. We've been watching them do it. and. Obviously it's difficult because nobody is doing it really well. No one has got on and stayed up. So I don't know whether that's good or bad. At least I know that I'm not going to be the worst here. But also I've realised that this is going to take a lot of work. I'm not just going to be the instant wheelie king unless there's something inherent with me, inside me from a previous life and it all comes back. But I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, so it's kind of good because I'm the last of the group. So for the first, we've watched the first two groups do their thing and uh, I'm going to uh, do my thing now.
actually up there, it's so much easier because all you're doing, it's like you said with a pool cue, if you hold the pool cue like that, you only need a little bit of movement. And once you're up, it's really easy, well really, it's easier to rock it than it is when you're at this angle. It's and definitely felt like I was, I was actually doing it. It wasn't just over in the throttle and for the best. It felt like I was, I was doing it because I had control. That may not be the case, we'll see. <laughs> Right, he's just showed us what to do on two wheels, or one wheel technically, if you get it right. It's, it, again, it's just the same thing on the throttle. We've got two sets of cones now, we get the revs right as we go through the first set, we blip the clutch, and it's, and it's less is more, it's the tiniest blip on the clutch when we go through a second set of cones. And then we get to, we get to keep up, and the, the thing he keeps saying over and over again is don't rush it, just take it easy. And because we've got these little things on the back, they're, they're set at different heights. One of them cuts out two plugs, and the other one cuts out the other two plugs. So it's going to lose momentum anyway. So I think we can't get it super high at this stage. At the moment, it's proven that we've got control. And if we have got control, then they'll let us move the little thingies up, and then we'll be able to get it higher. So the demo looked good. Uh, again, it's quite an advantage being in the last group here, because I get to see everybody else do it because it always looks easy when the instructor shows us. I finally understand what he means. I, it's a four-cylinder bike. I don't know if I've ever ridden a four-cylinder bike before. Get on this bike you've never ridden with four cylinders of power and then open it up. And it's somebody else's bike. It's like a matter of respect. It's like, really? Should I really be screaming someone else's bike? And when I finally did, just without total disrespect to the engine, just scream it. And I realised the dad thing now. I've got it and that's all it is. And it just comes up. <laughs> We're going to have a go on it to see, well probably to show me up and show me how wheelieable it is and uh, when Nick's had a go, uh, based on what his uh, recommendation is then hopefully I'll have a go on it. I think it's wheelieable, we'll be fine. So yeah, so we just adjusted the clutch a little bit, taking some of the slack out, make it easy to be precise. So I'm going to get my jacket and give it a whirl, see what happens. Alright, let's give it a go with it. Okay. So, it was actually a lot easier than I was expecting it, right. uh, which is a good sign. But first gear definitely, second gear wasn't quite enough run. So what we're going to do is a bit more like the quads because it's a single cylinder. Get nice and smooth, just low down in the rev range and then throttle clutch. Okay. okay? okay. So yeah, I've got to, uh, I'm not going to lie, the, uh, the progression you had from this morning where it was, you were struggling a little bit uh -huh. uh, to where you were just now, there's still a session to go, uh, is the best I've seen. No. I've, really? Honestly, from no, from no one doing any wheelies before to doing the height you were doing at, I was, initially I was a bit worried thinking you were way too high, but you were fine. So well done. Yeah, good work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I think it was amazing. He, his last wheelie was just absolutely awesome. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I was—I saw you go up, and I'm thinking, "Oh my God, is he going to come down?" <laughs> well, that's the end of the day. The weather's just about to break. It's just a few drops away now. So perfect. So I've been just the atmosphere and everybody here, and uh, it's so supportive. And, and it, when I first started on that quad bike, I couldn't do it. And I thought it was going to be. And to actually have done that now, and we've got it up. And even I think I know what I'm doing now. So um, as soon as I'm back in Bulgaria, where the laws are there to be interpreted as you please, I will be going down the little back roads, because uh, he recommended use your own personal air but we haven't actually got one of those. So I died doing wheel and it's exactly what I wanted to do. Thank you, Tom. <laughs>
<laughs> I can still get it up at 50. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the show. Now in December, it's gonna be a particularly special show because we will be filming it in front of a live studio audience in November. And it will also be your opportunity to see for the first time our Christmas special adventure. So tune in and we'll see you in December. No! Ah, that sounds like I was having a poo. <laughs> Explain it again to me why this is so much fun. <laughs> oh, the bells, the bells. Back up the hill. Am I getting you in, in and out of focus now? <laughs> Three lots of clues, 15 minutes. That clue doesn't count. You can't, does. you can't count that clue. Of course we're, we're I can. You two me to a point that's no, 60 no, yards oh, away. No, don't. You, gonna... <laughs> you can't. I can. <laughs> I can. Those are the okay. And for those people, who keep on telling us not to be like Top Gear, it will be the best one in the world. You can't use that. Why not? Why well, not only does this sound really arrogant, it looks like you're about to blow up. <laughs> so, in the world. In the world. Yeah. <laughs> <That's not funny. laughs> Is that right? Kitchen. Personally, I prefer the one with Clarkson. We stock the best adventure bike clothing on the market, including Climb and Revit and other brands that we do trust as well. And as you can see, we take this very seriously. <laughs>